Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, Jesse K asks, Joking aside, is it possible to be literally allergic to exercise? Just before we get started, I do want to say that this video is brought to you by Glasses USA. Now, as you know, I wear glasses, so it's pretty obvious, but these ones, they're getting a little bit past it. They're all wonky, a bit scratched up. They're a few years old, and I needed to get a new pair. So, Glasses USA, that's where I went, and they absolutely delivered on some new frames for me. I got these, the Muse Classic, and what's awesome is you can get them in matte, so this frame, totally matte, no reflections. I also got these, the Elliot, for when I'm feeling more sophisticated, and then these. Now, these are pretty much an exact match of my old ones, but they are totally matte, so again, no reflections of the green screen, so it doesn't look all janky. But you don't have to go for matte, you can go for whatever you want. They have them in a whole bunch of colors and styles, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, they have a vast range, 4,000 different options. And hey, they've also got designer sunglasses, like these Ray-Bans. Now, you might be worried about not being able to try them on, but fear not. They have this thing called a virtual mirror that helps you try on glasses from the comfort of your own home. Now, I was pretty skeptical about this because I had done something like this a really long time ago and it wasn't very good. The technology's come a long way. I mean, here's a quick clip of me and my mug trying on some virtual glasses. Looking good. One of the best things about Glasses USA is that it's super affordable. They cut out the middleman so they can give you prescription glasses at up to 70% off retail and frames and lenses start at just $30. Plus, they're super high quality lenses. They are every bit as good as my previous overpriced lenses and if you're not happy you can send it back because there's a 100% money back guarantee. So yeah, Glasses USA, they're one of the sponsors I really like because it's just one of those things that it doesn't make sense to do it another way and it's really the case with Glasses USA. Check them out in the description below and get a special deal on your first pair. And thanks to Glasses USA for the sponsorship and let's get on with today's video. Most couch potatoes have probably at some point in their lives said, I can't run a kilometer without feeling like I'm going to die. They might also sarcastically proclaim they must be allergic to exercise. And amazingly enough, it turns out there is a rare disorder in which someone can be deathly allergic to exercise, a condition known as exercise-induced anaphylaxis, or EIA. Allergies in general come with a wide range of symptoms and can range from mild to very, very deadly. Fortunately for most, a deadly allergic reaction known as anaphylaxis is rare. It's generally accepted anaphylaxis affects approximately 2% of the population, and EIA is thought to represent only about 5 to 15% of all of those anaphylactic cases. Interestingly, of those, women seem to be twice as likely to suffer from it than men. It's important to note that although the symptoms of anaphylaxis can be brought on by exercise, exercise itself might not be the only cause of the reaction. Typical allergy mediators like foods, pollens, and medications, when combined with exercise, may result in such a reaction. Among these, food-dependent exercise-induced anaphylaxis is the most common, accounting for one-third to one-half of all EIA cases. In essence, your body can handle the offending food and it can handle the exercise, but when you combine them, you get an overreaction of your immune system. So, now the big question is, well, what exactly is going on here? So, our immune system is extremely complicated, and it requires numerous types of cells and molecules working together to fight off a foreign pathogen. Any reaction from your immune system is generally divided into two different categories, innate and adaptive, both of which have specific types of cells working in response to an infection. All of these cells are broadly classified as white blood cells. An innate immune system reaction uses cells that can recognize several different types of foreign invaders, pathogens like viruses, bacteria, and fungi. It can be activated by some non-infectious problems, like simply being exposed to cold or hot temperatures, and even just pumping some iron. The specific types of innate immune system cells include basophils, eosinophils, neutrophils, monocytes, and mast cells. Adaptive immune cells, on the other hand, react to specific pathogens, usually produced by your lymphatic system. They're known as B and T cells. 
While they work differently, both B and T cells have the same goal, and that's to defend the body against specific types of invaders. Your immune system can make T and B cells that match the surface molecules of invading pathogens, with the T and B cells able to quickly multiply, producing large numbers of identical cells that can recognize and destroy the foe. B cells do not directly attack infected cells. Rather, they primarily produce antibodies, unique protein molecules that attach to specific harmful pathogens. These are called antigens. This antibody acts like a red flag to T cells and other disease killers known as phagocytes. These are then able to recognize the foreign body and destroy it. Once the infection disappears, memory B cells can stay around for years, sometimes throughout your entire life. If the same invader appears in the future, it will once again mobilize and attack the pathogen. Produced by your thymus, thus T-cell, T-cells come in several different types and perform different functions. Helper T-cells produce chemicals, triggering B-cells to develop into plasma cells. Killer T-cells target and kill cells that have become infected or are cancerous. Regulatory T-cells help control your immune system's reaction, preventing it from getting out of hand. Memory T cells, like memory B cells, stick around for a while, quickly reacting should the same invader appear. When your immune system reacts to an allergy, it can present with symptoms ranging from mild to, well, life-threatening. The more common, less problematic symptoms are things like fever, cough, runny nose, itchiness, hives, and general body aches. These mild symptoms usually don't require a visit to a doctor, and if annoying enough, you might treat it with over-the-counter medications like Benadryl. Should your immune reaction continue or become out of control, it can progress to anaphylaxis. Generally accepted as life-threatening, this reaction is more systemic and involves several organs and body systems. It can produce more serious symptoms like nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and dizziness. It can also result in difficulty breathing from swelling to the face, throat, and the lungs. Your veins and arteries also might begin dilating to the point that your blood pressure becomes extremely low and you actually pass out. All of this can progress to rapid heart rates, cardiac dysrhythmias, and even cardiac arrest. So, anaphylaxis, or any lesser immune response caused by exercise, isn't different from any other anaphylactic reaction. It was first reported in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology in June of 1979. The authors described a case where a patient had an anaphylactic reaction to shellfish, but the reaction didn't occur until the patient went for a run. The authors further noted that the allergic reaction was only mild and well-tolerated when the patient ate shellfish without exercise. If he didn't eat shellfish, he could run without issue. When combined, however, the patient would have an anaphylactic reaction. Since this 1979 report, there have been numerous accounts of patients who have had anaphylactic reactions from exercise, including recognizing the link between food and other allergies when combined with exercise, as previously mentioned, with food dependent seemingly the most common. To be specifically diagnosed with EIA, you need to have symptoms of anaphylaxis associated with exercise. The cause must also be differentiated from an anaphylactic reaction due to food dependent anaphylaxis or being exposed to an allergen before the workout. It should also be noted that EIA can be brought on by things that some people might not consider strenuous, like a mild stroll in the park, though it's much more commonly seen when a more strenuous workout is pursued. Interestingly enough here, the reaction is also not always repeatable. The same exercise causing it today might not actually cause it tomorrow. Well, this all brings us back around to what exactly is going on in the body in order to cause this. While the specific factor or factors producing exercise-induced anaphylaxis aren't proven, it's generally agreed among researchers that histamine release is the key component in the reaction here. Histamine is known as an autocoid, which acts like a hormone, only it has a more localized reaction. It's released from the innate immune system cells, basophils, and mast cells. The process is called degranulation. Once secreted, histamine helps increase the absorption of allergens to the body's organs, like the skin. Once there, other mast cells get stimulated to degranulate by an antibody, immunoglobulin isotope, known as IgE. IgE attached to mast cells has long been known to signify an acute allergic reaction. The acceptance of histamine being the mediator in EIA comes from the fact that there is an increase in plasma histamine, along with the IgE being present on mast cells within the skin in patients experiencing EIA. 
These patients also tend to be more susceptible to degranulation of their mast cells and their basophils compared to people who don't have EIA. The reason for this lowered threshold and the exercise-specific reason for degranulation producing histamine hasn't actually been proven. There are some widely accepted theories, however. They include increased gastrointestinal permeability, absorption, blood flow redistribution, increased osmolality, and increased endogenous endorphin release. Well, that was a bunch of long words, so let me put this in slightly more layman's terms. Exercise induces the absorption of nutrients and other molecules from the GI tract. The speculation, then, is that the allergens will have greater contact with the parts of the immune system associated with the gut, which happens to be a lymphoid organ. This is probably nature's way of protecting us from the many potential pathogens that we put in our mouths. As for blood flow redistribution, this is thought to contribute because during exercise it's redirected from inactive tissues like those found in your digestive tract to active tissues like those found in your skeletal and muscle tissues. Those tissues' mast cells are different from the ones found in your GI tract. Therefore, the thinking is that as long as a food allergen remains in the gut and only exposed to those type of mast cells, it doesn't cause histamine release. But should it go to the skeletal muscles and skin, those mast cells will degranulate and cause a reaction. Exercise also causes the release of endorphins, which gives you the same type of feeling that taking morphine would give you. The release of these endorphins has been known to enhance mast cell degranulation. It seems reasonable, then, that the aftermath of this increased endorphin release would escalate the degranulation of mast cells, resulting in a histamine response that causes the cascading effects of anaphylaxis. This brings us to the final forerunner in the theories of why certain people get EIA, involving increased osmolality in your intestines. This means there is more allergen getting to certain areas of your intestines, specifically the worm-like processes called villi in your small intestines. It's thought that when you exercise, the mast cells at the bases of your villi get exposed to more of an allergen. This exposure then secretes histamine, which in turn results in an increased distribution of the allergen to many of the body's organs, such as skin, and the cascading effects of histamine then produce anaphylaxis. No matter the exact cause, the treatment for EIA is the same as any other anaphylaxis. Avoid repeating the same behaviors that caused a reaction in the first place. As any good doctor would say, well, if it hurts to do that, stop doing that. For those who want to do that anyway, recent evidence has suggested that pre-treating people with agents that inhibit cell degranulation may prevent food-dependent EIA. Should you unsuccessfully avoid experiencing anaphylaxis, well, I'd recommend you call for emergency medical aid. The doctor or paramedic will treat the life-threatening symptoms first, like the swelling in your respiratory tract and your extremely low blood pressure. They will then attempt to prevent the histamine cascade of death with antihistamines like Benadryl and corticosteroids like prednisone. In the end, yes, a person can be allergic to exercise, but as it's an exceptionally rare condition, should your body mass index be higher than your age, you probably aren't one of those who can use it as an excuse not to hit the gym. So I really hope you liked that video. If you did, please do subscribe to this channel for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Link on the screen as well as below me now. Thanks again to Glasses USA for the sponsorship. Check them out through the link in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.